Hello again, whiskey friends. Thanks for joining me today for another discussion. I got a topic today. You know, when it comes to these topics, they always come from Instagram, Patreon, or YouTube comments. Something where I feel like a video response is warranted. And today's discussion was an interesting question. I posted a video about recent bottles that I killed. And one of the questions I got was, Jeff, aren't you afraid of like killing these bottles? Like sometimes I purposely don't kill bottles and I just sit on them because I'm afraid to kill them without a backup, which I think is such an interesting mindset to have. But I also think I tackle that in a very unique way with a unique strategy. So if you are somebody who has that problem too, maybe I have a solution for you on how I get over that. But ultimately, no, I'm not afraid to kill bottles. I don't wait till I have backups, but there is a big asterisk on it. And you're about to learn my strategy. So thanks for joining me today, everybody. Let's kick off the show. All right. So today's whiskey discussion. Should you be afraid of drinking and killing bottles that are irreplaceable, maybe limited releases, or if you don't have backups for them? A, no. Space is finite. Like, I don't know what everyone else is dealing with here. I literally live in like a eight by two area. I mean, that's all the space that I have in this basement. I got this shelf, this shelf, and that shelf. And anything that exceeds that is going to end up on the floor next to me like there is 20 bottles on the floor next to me right now. And it drives me nuts because I don't have enough space for the bottles that I have. So space is a luxury. So when you're hanging on to something for a very long time, come on, it's time to kill that thing. Now, there's always a time and a place that you can kill things. You know, if it's a very special bottle, yeah, okay. Maybe you put that one to the side and you kill it during a bottle share. You kill it during a special memory. But otherwise, it's just taking up space and there's going to be diminishing returns based on the amount of air in that bottle if you're hanging on to it for as long as I do sometimes. I mean, as I say that, what I just said out loud about not being afraid to kill bottles, with that said, some of the bottles that I have on the shelf are four to five years old still. Now, they're still mostly maybe halfway full. That's just the life of the bottle of that particular bottle that's been on the shelf. There's nothing that's like guarding it or I'm not drinking it because I don't have a backup. No. Now, I do understand, though, the concept of here is this special bottle. Here is this limited release. I don't have a backup. And there is no way to get something that tastes like this ever again in my lifetime. So what do I do about that? Like, do I just kill it and enjoy the moment and it's gone? Do I wait until the perfect moment arrives that I can kill that bottle? I mean, there's a lot of different strategies that you can go about that. But when I saw this question and we talked about the bottle kills that I recently did in 2023, because I have been slaughtering things on the shelves, desperately trying to make space so that I can get these, these bottles off the floor. Um, but recent ones that I did kill as an example, I got the barrel dovetail batch one, and I also killed the barrel seagrass back one batch one. Now, when I say kill, that's not entirely true. I didn't finish all of them. Essentially what's happening. And this is my routine when it comes to anything on my shelf you know, once it gets to the halfway point, there is like an expiration date that's going through my head. And if it gets down any lower to about right here, I essentially call it and I take this bottle off to the side and I will take two two ounce sample bottles and I will pour four ounces out of that bottle into two samples. I will mark them. I will seal them. I will parafill them and I will put them in my closet to forget about and then i will enjoy the end of the bottle and kill that sucker and that is how i typically end bottles unless we're talking about 
a really, really special pour that I want to share it amongst friends. Asterisks on that as well. Because what I've been doing since 2019 is essentially siphoning off four ounces of every meaningful, special, and, I don't know, inspiring bottle at the time and putting it into separate two-ounce sample bottles to preserve it so that at a future date, I can see what it tastes like. So I use the example of the Dovetail Batch 1 and the Seagrass Batch 1. Well, guess what? We're up to, like, what? Batch 12 of the Dovetail, maybe Batch 8 of the Seagrass. I mean, those are just going to keep marching on. I now have the ability, when we get up to some milestone, to be like, let me compare that back to Batch 1, find that sample, and do that. But ultimately, my goal is to not touch these samples for like a decade or more so that I can meaningfully track flavor drift on all of these bottles. That's my ultimate goal. Like, how fun is it right now to taste Dusties and see where things were? I kind of want to start doing the same thing. And back in 2019, I decided that if I wanted to make that happen, I'll have to make that happen myself and save these sample bottles. So I'm going to pull out some. I've actually not looked at these yet, by the way. I've got a whole box right here. I haven't pulled any out. I'm just going to pull a handful of them out, and let's see what I've stored for the future. All right. Ooh, that's a really good one to start out with. Okay, so this, this bottle is done. Um, this box, by the way, is going to be a combination of 21, I guess 22, based on what I just pulled. But... Here is an OKI 10-year batch 29. So I've got this in a two-ounce sample bottle, and you can see how I sealed it off here to try to keep all the air and just kind of keep it concentrated here. So this was a bottle. This was actually my first OKI. If I've got the batch numbers right in my head. Um, so I'll know what MGP tasted like when it was distilled in, I think, 2016 in this case and released in 2016. I've now got that preserved. Maybe that'll come in handy someday for some review on the channel. Okay, here's another one. I love this one. Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend, Batch 28. And yes, I know, Darrell, my handwriting's awful. But here's a Batch 28. What are we up to now? Batch 150? That'll be a good comparison at some point. What did these used to taste like, especially if the hype on the Cigar Blends comes down? Ooh, here's a, uh, oh man, we're fitting a theme right now. I clearly pulled these off from the same spot in the box. OKI, batch 39. Oh, and here's a fun one. So this was a uh, story time pick. Thanksgiving, NASA Family Reserve American Whiskey, finished in stout. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to catalog these and save these over time. I'm going to pull from the back here a Doc Swinson 15-year from NASA Liquors. Kentucky Owl, Batch 9. Bardstown Discovery 7. So you kind of get the point, right? Like, I never really, like, kill barrels per se, or bottles per se. I have a little system in place to preserve them. and. I think it's an ingenious system. I mean, I can pull these things out at a bottle share, at a tasting, what I want with a friend. Hey, you ever had this before? Oh, no, I, I got into bourbon after that point. Well, let's go back and taste it. I'll show you what everyone's been talking about. Or one of these that I used was a whiskey friend who hadn't had batch one of the uh, Bardstown Chateau de Labade. Well, I had four ounces siphoned away in those two ounce bottles. I gave him one of the samples so he could try. Perfect use for it. That's exactly what it's there for. It's there to preserve it. It's there to encase it. And all it takes up is a little bit of space in this closet over here. And I just put them in there and forget about them. So answering the original question, am I afraid to finish bottles? No. Because I have a system for that, and I can still enjoy these, at least on a very limited one, maybe two more times basis. But, hey, 
that's kind of enough to maybe let go of any of that regret or um, tension in the shoulders when you finish something you don't have a backup for. Ah, siphon it away. Kill that thing. Save the shelf space. This takes up a lot less space than that big giant bottle. So that's my tip for you. That is my strategy. Man, I've had a whole lot of fun of this. As I said, I've been doing this since like 2019. So there's kind of like four or five boxes of these sample bottles saved in that closet. I hope to get to them someday. It might just be a like huge sample party, and that might be the way that I get rid of them. But either way, I think that'll be fun. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, this is a long-term game. Hopefully, I got a long run to go. Well, that's how I want to answer that question, everybody. Not afraid to kill these things, but asterisk, I do save four ounces of it. So hopefully you learned something. Maybe you keep the strategy with me. I think it's a good strategy to have, and I'd recommend it to everybody. All right. Well, I'll catch you later, whiskey friends. Let me know if you have a strategy or if you like the strategy in the comments. I'm very interested in reactions of this one because I don't think a lot of people do this. So maybe it's a weird thing to do. I don't know. I think it's kind of a logical thing to do, but interested in your perspective. Thanks, everybody. Bye.